Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here. And today, as promised, we're going to continue with this little run of shops by building on this site here. Now, just before we start downstairs uh, on the building desk, I just thought I'd give you a slight update to this from early feedback. First one from Kaz is to flip the crocodile sign round so we've got the more prominent head facing us. I think that's a good idea, so I've just flipped that round. Very easy to do, just had to mirror everything. Secondly, I decided to add Lord Voldemort's rather large snake, and I thought, well, if I put it on the roof, it doesn't make much sense, but I've put a hole in the air conditioning unit, so that one has escaped by another route, meaning this whole shop is just falling apart with holes and all the animals are escaping. And then the third one, just so I could utilise a spider as part of my sign, We've got a spider's web held on the side by the clips with a blue iridescent spider. I was going to go for a black one that's a bit more realistic, but I've used all of my black ones in the tunnel underneath the castle. So it's either that or red. I already had a red snake and a red frog as a door handle. So blue it is. Now, last time we said we were going to have three shops all based on the same shop from set 60097 being based on the Lego store in that set. Um, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to have the Lego store, the exotic pet store, and the third one yet to be decided. But I think I'm going to have the other two on the other side of the river from the exotic pet store that we did last time, which means that the vacant spot we've got for today's video is for something different. And what I'm going to use in that spot is the City Coffee Shop from the recent donut shop opening set 60233. Now, I'm sure you're all aware that the main feature of this set is the action feature on the roof, which basically means that the big oversized donut can be catapulted around. Now, I was a bit torn whether to keep that or not because it's relatively ugly having that on the roof. But then I thought, well, it is good fun. And um, there's no question about having the donut on top. That just has to stay. So I'm going to keep this feature, but I'm going to mend it slightly. But the other problem I have with it is that it's a city coffee chain. And those of you who watch my videos a lot will know that I'm going to have uh, five, or maybe even more in future, uh, coffee shacks from the coffee chain, which is the coffee chain in set 60097. And um, I'm going to have loads of those. So there's one every sort of 100 Lego yards or 100 meters. And um, in order for that sort of pun to work, it's, it's very important that those coffee stores are recognizable as being repeating all the time. So I don't want to have a competing coffee chain. So basically, I'm saying goodbye to City Coffee and I'm just going to dedicate this store to donuts and cakes. Another couple of changes I'm going to make are getting rid of the ATM machine on the end. I do like this, so I'll keep it for somewhere else because it's uh, very good, especially with a sticker on with the different denominations and so on. But I've got uh, a ATM machine on my market square already. And basically, it's only, well, a short pace across the square, really. So having two in such close proximity, I think, will be a bit too much. So I'm going to get rid of that from here. Now, the other thing I need to do is just to reverse this uh, feature, because I'm going to need this to catapult off this side, because otherwise it will hit the exotic pet shop, which is going to be here. So I just need to flip that, so that should be fairly simple. I'm going to try and tidy it up as well, because there's a lot of different colours and different odd bits on the roof there, and I think we can make it look a little bit smarter and not so obvious. And then on the insides, I like the counter, but we're going to have to get rid of this guy because he's a barista and got a coffee uh, logo. In fact, that is the logo of uh, the coffee chain, so... I'll definitely have to get rid of him, otherwise he'll be working in the wrong store. The sign we can keep, because that's just cakes. It's got a croissant and 
two different sort of Danish world type things. So that's fine. But I'm going to get rid of the coffee machine and put in more cake making sort of equipment, really. And I think I'll keep the table and chair as well because I think that works. So generally just an overhaul. Right, let's get on with it. Right, so I've pulled out the bench with a couple of the cakes on it, which I'll use, uh, I think, in the sign, and a coffee machine, which is going to go entirely. So I'm just left with the bench, so I thought I'd start again. What I've come up with is sort of more of a sort of kitchen setup. So I've got what I'll pretend is an oven there with a dial, and then I've got a sink, because both those things are going to be quite necessary in order to make cakes on the premises. And I've just laid in the work surface with a couple of what well, they oatmeal cookies that are cooling and a croissant because that is on the sign and we haven't got any croissant so far. So that's good. And I've left a space for something special. And I think for the proprietor, I thought we could use the Series 17 Gourmet Chef because, well, she's perfect, isn't she? She's got the hat integrated with the hair, which is really nice. She's got a whisk. And she's got a massive strawberry pie. So absolutely perfect minifigure for the scene, I think. So we need something special. So what else does a culinary genius need to make cakes? Well, a cake mixer, of course. And I got this idea from the set 41366 Olivia's Cupcake Cafe, and that's obviously a friend set. But the rather oversized cake mixer looks rather good, and I've done it in blue and yellow. Why? Because those are the pieces that I've got. <laughs> I, I needed a 2x2 two two slope, and all I've got is two 1x2 slopes for a start, so I mean, it's uh, it really is scavenging what little pieces I do have. So basically to make this, you'll need one of these modified plates, which is the two by two with the uh, curved bit on the end. And you get a one by one round stud upside down and force it into that hole. We need two by two slope. I'm using two one by twos instead. Then a one by two plate, just to give it a bit more height. A one by two brick. I'm using one with a profile just because it's the only blue one by two brick I've got. Then one of those modified plates with bar. And I've put that on just so it's a more smooth surface on the top. Then for the bowl of your cake mixer, you need one of those clear two by two by whatever sort of dome pieces mounted upside down. And then for the stirrer, we have a modified plate, one by one with a grabber like that. One by one round in blue. And then one of these cake swirl pieces, but this is in metallic silver. So when we clip it on here, it can go into the bowl, but we'll put some cookie dough in there. So then when this is in the down position, it can be mixing the dough and it lifts up. So it's quite good fun, that. So I thought that could be a big oh, machine that went on this unit here next to the sink and the oven. And then that would be a better replacement for the insides. Might have to move that sign a little bit. Good. Right, now I'm going to remove the ATM and I don't like this showing a different colour. Uh, I'm also going to focus on the outside sign and then we can move on to the roof. Right, so I've done all that. The mixer does fit when it's put in uh, after the sign, so that's fine. The second bit is I've moved the whole building one stud forward just to give me this bit at the back. I need that space for the tolerance for the tram to go whizzing by the back of the store, just like on the last one. So I've moved everything forward. This side, I've just removed the ATM and put in some of these uh, 
Palisade bricks just to give it a bit more texture and interest. The front, I got rid of the grey one of those just to replace it with tan because I had one and so then when you look at it from the other side it uh, looks more in tune with the colour. And then on this side I added some yellow modified bricks with studs on the side and the reason why they are disgusting and visible is because I want to put, mount another sign on the outside of this side and there's a sign or rather the menu on the inside already so the fact is when they're both covered you won't see them at all and the reason why they're yellow is because again they're the ones I had so that's fine if they're not visible from any angle so there we go looking pretty good so I still need to do the signs I need to do the roof but before I do that I thought I'd put in firstly our wonderful chef who's got plenty of room on her side which is good makes a change from the last store which was very very crammed and I thought who likes donuts well everyone but who likes donuts in particular policemen perhaps that's the cliche isn't it but um I thought more fun might be to use the recent series 19 firefighter partially because she's got this shouty mouth because she comes with a loud hailer uh, but I thought that could be for shoveling donuts into so I thought we could give her a donut in her hand and have her sat at our table and then we could put another donut on the table as well because she's uh, obviously had a bad day and she's uh, having more than one so let's see that through the door I'm not sure the light's that great to be able to see that but you can see that's happening in there excellent and well, you can see the great big mixer through that windows so that's good right on to signage now as you know I didn't like the coffee sign city coffee so we're getting rid of that and what I got in my last haul was Donut Fancy, which seems quite appropriate name for a store. That's from the uh, Simpsons Series 1 Marge minifigure. Uh, I got two of these so I can make two signs, one for the front and one for the far side. And I thought I could just make a sign out of little cakes, like the ones inside. And then I've made one on dark tan and one on dark blue I don't know which one I prefer because dark blue ties in with this but I only have one dark blue one so I can always get another one so that looks quite a good contrast doesn't it and then the other one on the side so we can't see those yellow bricks at all now thankfully and that one is on dark tan so I do have two dark tan bricks uh, plates rather but, um, do you know, I think I prefer the blue. I think it pops more. Do you agree? Yeah. So I think I will order another 2x4 in dark blue so I can have both of the signs looking like that. And I think that sign will be visible from the uh, market square. Right. I've got a green bin to add to the alleyway, which will be here in between this store and the exotic pet store but the only thing left to do is sort out the top okay so let's strip down the top and put some of this back but when the first thing is these are quite chunky because they're two by two Technic bricks and I thought instead of having those I could use one by two ones and I'd reduce the amount of stuff on the roof I need to keep this bit but I don't want it to be red so I'll get rid of that put on a dark grey one it's consistent get rid of this don't need that on don't need any of these vents and this 
is going to swap sides so it can go there and I've got the plate that's necessary there just in tan so it can be more subtle put that back on these back on quite like the gold streamers because it's newly open okay so I think that's looking a lot more trim a lot more sleek could put these vents back on there couldn't I that might look a bit better yeah good okay so that's that and then for the donut itself I've just removed one plate from the underside here because I don't think you need it and it just raises the donut up a little too high in my opinion I think that looks like a better sign I and mean, these pieces really are fantastic with the sprinkles on so that's really good and then uh, just to test the action yep that still works so we can crush poor little minifigures that are walking by here with the push of a button very good so not the most massive change but I think you'll agree better for it so we've got the donut fancy sign another donut fancy sign which will be on a dark blue tile in due course plate rather and then on the inside we've got the gourmet chef from series 17 the fire chief from series 19 eating donuts and a good old cake mixer sink and all the rest of it I definitely think the inside's an improvement great right let's go put all of that in the Lego room and here it is in position looking good that 3d donut sign really does pop it's fantastic I do like it we better also check the play feature hadn't we and unfortunately there's a little barista walking by oh no oh, he totally got squished put it back on I also found a black spider for here so I can get rid of that blue one that I showed you earlier also I've decided after saying it loads of times but never doing anything about it to add a couple of vehicles so while I'm looking at set 60233 I've added the TV van, which is a fantastic van, absolutely beautiful colouring and uh, very functional as well. And I thought while we were here, we may as well add the large lorry with flatbed crane, having just dropped off that large donut for the roof. Brilliant, a bit of life at last. There's the fire chief with her donuts after her bad day. And the cake mixer. And the gourmet chef. Really like that donut fancy sign. I think that's perfect. It's even got the same colouring as our huge 3D one. There's the bin, incidentally. Trash can in between the two buildings. A new escaping snake. The black spider, old escaping snake, long escaped crocodile, I think the frog might have been there originally. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? I think it's an unbroken row of shops from the bike shop through the donut shop to the pet shop. I think that works. You can see the second row of buildings behind it. There's a the hint of a road, and obviously as you get closer, you can look down on it and see the road in full. And again, we've got good clearance for the tram to get by the back of all this. Yeah, good, good. Now the next two shops will be just there on that base plate at the bottom right 
and they'll be both using the template of that Lego store building. And supporting that, I can't build them right now because supporting that will be the subway station, which will be underneath that because there's a table underneath this table uh, and that will have the subway train on it. So we'll have to do that before too long. And in other good news, I've bought the IKEA tables that I need in order to facilitate the rest of the train line and uh, get the main train station done and stuff. So it's uh, all systems go. Right, another successful store added. I think you'll agree it fits rather well. I really like the contrast between the dark blue and the tan. And just take care when walking next to it, okay? Ouch. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I think we'll be doing a haul which will be a bit different. I've treated myself on reaching a thousand subscribers. So something fun for the build room in that one. Uh, and then it will be back here, maybe for subway station, maybe for uh, implementing those IKEA tables. I'm not sure yet. So see you then.